15th century Italy, Florence has become the center for the Renaissance, bringing new ideas about architecture, art, and engineering to the region. But Florence would soon cede the limelight back to a former powerhouse, now on the rise again. Italy's center of power and glory would now return to the city that conquered the world, Rome. In the early 1300s, there's a big beef in Rome about who exactly is Pope. So the rightful Pope supposedly goes off to France. And for the next several decades, the papacy lives in France. Now, by the 1370s, when the popes come back to Rome, Rome is a ghost town. And for the next hundred years or so, all the way through the Renaissance, each pope is successively trying to rebuild Rome. Now, in the 1490s, when the Medici are booted out of Florence, Florence becomes a republic, yeah, but they're broke. And so all these famous cats like Da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo, they split Florence because Florence is no longer happening. If you're a player, the place you want to be is Rome. Rome had been nothing in the 14th century because the popes had moved up, but they come back in the early 15th century, and from that point on, they began to gradually to reorganize the papal state. One pope in particular would usher in an unprecedented wave of revitalization and engineering. His name was Sixtus V. Sixtus and the popes who come after him feel the need to turn Rome into an important and impressive capital city, the capital of Christendom. Sixtus V sort of took it upon himself to re-urbanize the city. If Rome was going to be the home of the Catholic Church again, the city needed an extreme makeover. But re-engineering Rome would be an epic task. First, Sixtus was determined to clean up its mean streets. The city was teeming with criminals. Sixtus simply had all the vandals rounded up and killed. The next step was restoring the aqueducts, one of the greatest symbols of Roman engineering. When the water returned, the population boomed and the city flourished. Roads were paved, streets widened, and the city exploded with new construction. But Sixtus wasn't done. He had a master plan for the city a framework for organizing future development through the placement of monuments of glory. One of his particular practices uh, was in fact to use the ancient Egyptian obelisks that had been brought to the city by the ancient Romans. Uh, these were military trophies that the Romans had brought back in ancient times uh, and had erected throughout the city. We know today that there are more Egyptian obelisks in Rome uh, than in Egypt itself and how Sixtus used these obelisks uh, was to, in fact, place them as urban exclamation points. Sixtus wanted to move one of those obelisks to the front of a new cathedral named St. Peter's Basilica. But he had a problem. It weighed more than 300 tons. Moving the obelisk was no easy task. Sixtus would award the challenge to architect and engineer Domenico Fontana. Fontana's plan seemed simple enough, but the execution proved nearly impossible. To protect the stone, he encased the 660,000 pound obelisk in a colossal wooden tower. Iron bars were attached along the edge. The wooden tower had columns extending nearly 100 feet in the air. With ropes pulled through the eyes of the iron bars, so the obelisk could be winched up by windlasses. The plan was to use a crew of more than 900 men to execute the move. Using 40 windlasses, the obelisk was raised off the ground and lowered onto a platform of log rollers for the relocation to its new site. On April 30th, 1586, under the watchful eye of Pope Sixtus, the crew began the incredible engineering feat of moving the obelisk. 
When the men were hoisting it up, they were under command um, to remain silent throughout the whole process, under pain of death, if one of them in fact broke the silence. Finally, 17 days after they began moving, the obelisk reached its new location, in front of St. Peter's Basilica, where it stands today. Word of Rome's extraordinary revitalization spread throughout Europe. The capital of the ancient world had finally returned to center stage. And the age of architects that had begun in Florence had now transformed Rome and the rest of Europe. Artists uh, of all sorts could create such beauty, such wondrous works of art on the scale of St. Peter's Basilica, uh, like the obelisks uh, that were re-erected throughout the city of Rome, like the dome of the cathedral in the city of Florence. It gave the human significance again, and it, it gave us a bit of an attitude as well, uh, that we are again the center of all things. And many people think it is with the Renaissance that modern culture uh, actually begins.